I thought I'd make the next video or this video about 3D printing. It's been a very important part of building this vehicle. Um, if the only tool you had was a hammer, everything would look like a nail. If you've got a 3D printer, everything looks like something that needs to be 3D printed. Um, this was a bracket that I designed. This is it uh, represented in it as an STL, and STL is the native format that's exported to slicer programs to create the 3D printed object. Um, this is a bracket for the power steering pump. Now it's pretty chunky and it's not going to win any design awards, but it gets the job done. And when it's fitted to the van, it well, I think it looks all right. And for the most part, it's buried and it's just another plastic bracket. There isn't, I don't think it's that obvious it's plastic to be honest. Doesn't take that long to print. Um, what I usually do is I'll design a couple of parts or three, four parts, put them on, well, put them through the slicer program, get them all printing at the same time, and then when I wake up in the morning, you've got whatever parts you needed, and if you need to print m uh, more parts or multiples of the same, you can set the printer to run again, go to work, come home and you've got a load of parts within a matter of a couple of days you can be quite a bit further on and it helps just keep things moving and the VW badge I got from Thingiverse so what I did went on Thingiverse typed in VW just to see if anything existed and sure enough it did and this guy created this badge which is brilliant just click download Click save, open, get rid of that, uh, there we go, there we go, get rid of that rubbish, right, okay, so here we've got it in Simplify 3D. Now to scale it to the size that I want is 100mm so that's absolutely fine but if you want it 160mm it's quite simple what you do is scale it up make it the size you want it to be uh, now you've got it 160ish mil go down a little bit there you go, perfect. And now when you print that out, you'll end up with the VW badge at exactly the right size to fit on the front of the van, or you can scale it for the rear or any other model of VW, no problem at all. Now here's the other thing that's good about 3D modeling, and especially Fusion 360. Oh, the best part of Fusion 360 is it's free to use for hobby use and for small businesses and startups. Um, you can modify things. So this bracket is a bit it's a bit too dainty. It needs to be made a bit more substantial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out. And I'm just going to hit return. Say OK. I'm going to do the same here. So I'm just going to thicken it up a bit, leaving all the internal sizes the same, but just giving it a bit more strength. Uh, I had a couple of them break. It was only when, um, well, I was being a bit sort of aggressive with them, just to hold the wires in place strong enough. But I would rather make it just a bit heavier. And a bit stronger. So just by pulling those two um, those two surfaces, I've changed the part quite radically. Now it's got a, a thicker um, wall to it, and I can also change the um, printing settings. So let's do that. Click 3D print. You click the object. 
and click OK. And it will take us to a slicer eventually. There we go. Now we need to orientate the part. So you click on it. Go the right way. There we go. Center arrange it. There we go. Now we hit Control D. And we can have multiple copies of it. So let's say I want 10 in total, so I'll have 9 extra copies. Should be able to hit center and arrange, please. There we go. So there's all of our parts, extra thick, still got the same hole on the inside. It's still got the hole for the uh, self tapping screw or whatever bolt to go through. I have bought um, a rivet nut set, so I'll hopefully be playing with those and making it even more work for myself. But yeah, so there you go. You've got all of those. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can buy a P clip of that sort of size, but being able to make your own to fit exactly as you want, where you want, I think that has some value. And if you're not involved in 3D printing, I thought I'd show the next part, which is actually um, using the slicer program to change various things. Layers quite interesting. It's how high it prints. I tend to print everything at point 0.2 and I just for me that works very well. I use uh, four layers top, four layers bottom and I also do four layers uh, on the outside. Now I find that to be a combination that works. Infill. Um, 20 to 25 percent would be enough I reckon for this there isn't going to be a lot of infill at all it's well we'll actually see that in a minute um, the next one is temperature very important to print at a high enough temperature I find PETG with my printers prints at 240 degrees uh, and I print with a bed temperature of 60 degrees and I find for me that works uh, speeds, um, yeah, 4,800 4, millimeters a minute. Uh, that works. That it's, it gets a bit of a move on, but that works. And if I'm printing sort of at night, I do tend to put, uh, if I'm using the Prusa, I put that on stealth mode. And uh, it's nice and quiet and doesn't disturb anyone. So, we hit prepare to print. It will give us an idea of how long this is going to take, and what material is going to be used. Just thinking about it. There we go. Okay, it's going to take 4 hours and 19 minutes. So, you know, you could do a couple of prints like this in a day very comfortably, overnight. Um, the cost here are three pounds, not necessarily uh, correct. 82 grams, well, you get um, a kilo of um, material on a roll, so that's that's not too bad at all. So you know, gonna, you're going to get quite a few other uh, of those prints out of that, and they're quite dense. So if we scroll in. And go down. You see, it's basically those brackets are basically solid. There's only a little tiny bit of infill structure, the rest of it is printed absolutely solid. So that's going to be pretty strong because the layers are actually laid down radially the way it's sat. At that from experience is going to be pretty strong uh, and should do the job quite nicely. So next thing to do is put a card into the computer.
and why not? That'll be fine. Export it to a card, put the card into the 3D printer, and literally hit, hit print and walk away. Sometimes it's worth making sure the first layer goes down properly, but other than that, it gets on with business and I go to bed. There you go, done.